Hey, you guys, we're back with another video. Today, I'm going to be doing a mushroom shortcut wig. Um, well, I'm going to show you how I do that style. On a wig, um, I'm using Jenny Collection 28 piece. Um, I don't have the box, but anyways, when you're doing a shortcut, you're going to use the short to the bottom, the medium in the middle, and the long in the top. And then the rest of the top is going to be straight here. As I do my pixie cut short, um, short bottom, middle is um, middle length, and the top is the long length. So you'll use two packs when you're doing a pixie cut. But I'm not doing a pixie cut, I'm doing a mushroom cut or a bowl cut, whatever you want to call it. But anyways, I just wanted to bring you guys a video, so I'm going to show you how I do it. And when I'm doing a shortcut, when I um, place the tracks, I always double them. Two tracks. And I, when I'm doing a wig, I, uh, a shortcut wig, rather, even just like when I do a regular shortcut on a person's head, I always glue on the cap because it's much faster than trying to glue those tracks. It's not going to work. And I'm just going side to side with these tracks. Spray a little spritz to make the glue tack faster. Doing the bottom row takes so long, especially when you're doing a wig.
She's like, I can sign this whole, so just text me a hair from the same weekend. Yeah, they're all engineered with intelligent control, so the beat never goes about each other. Okay, go with this weak look. Excuse me, this is every day. So I'm bonding from side to side. The same way on each side. So once I get all of this bonded, I'm going to come back. Okay, I'm back, you guys. So I already bonded all of the 28 piece in. So it should look this way. Notice I left a little gap right there because I want the front, the bang to be full. So it should look like this. So now we're going to start in with our straight hair. And we're using sensual. Streak of blonde and a streak of um, 27. So I'm gonna double these tracks. So the first rows I bonded like that. Now I'm gonna start going around in a circle. Sit still, jeez. So your track should look like this. So now I'm gonna go around in a circle and I'm gonna stay close as possible. Oh, these junkies not cooperating, he's about to piss me off. Jesus Christ. Stay really close to the other one, you're bumping this. I'm gonna add the color.
Don't you say it, baby? I'll be back when I finish bonding the hair. Okay, so everything is bonded in, you guys. I almost didn't finish because it aggravated me. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and cut. This end. I'm just going straight down. He did that on his own. Around just like that. Front. Pull the head back a little. Yeah, there, there was a message on the wall that, that had said, I told you this would happen. 
but police have sort of not really been real upfront with the threat that has been made in the camp. Now, remember that camera that was set up right across the road by the detective? You have to watch the house for any nefarious goings on? Yeah. See, Chris had said, obviously, that when he left the house that morning, everything was grand. See, the camera showed Chris leaving his home at 5.43 a.m., exactly an hour before Chris called the detective who lived across the road to check in his house. But police were pretty quickly able to tell the victims had been murdered hours before Chris left the house. Mm. They got in there and they, you know, the police were like stiff, cold, you know. Idiot dummy. Seemed like they have been dead for a while. Definitely not after Chris left the house, which would then be less than an hour before they were discovered. So the police brought this up to Chris when they spoke to him that very day. And I know what's going on, so you can sit there. Boy, you acting too described. No, you did it. I'll tell you what, from the beginning, we'll just start off with what you got up this morning. So, time, you pull out the house. He's going to walk you through that first, and then we'll go through and kind of explain. Um, he'll talk about some different things as far as the beginning. Okay? Um, I'm going to send my one talk for 530. Use my phone for the number. 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 This hair? Oh, how nice. is it like a mushroom? He so dumb. He should have killed him right before he left. trying to sound so choked up.
clarify what you're saying. This weapon does not lie. It does not. She was not a liar. This weapon does not lie. I knew what tell you. I don't. I'm telling you the truth. How, how did how did how did we get this one? That's what I need to know. I need to know how and why you get one way on my team. I'm the curl. I'm just curling them under. So it turned out that, well, obviously, uh, he was having an affair, but not just that, he planned to marry Tara. Tara lived in St. Petersburg, Florida. The police down there spoke to her, but, well, other than having an affair with Chris, she, she genuinely wasn't involved in murder at all. She had no clue. Tara told the cops that they had started their relationship in November 2008, which, by the by, is the same month as those nasty emails started coming in, and that Chris had told Tara he would present divorce papers to Sherry the same day she ended up getting murdered. So I guess he really just didn't want to present the divorce papers. The police also found out he was texting Tara. At his family's funeral, telling her how much he missed her. Nice dude. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we got Chris, who was having an affair, was pretending he was the victim of harassment that he was sending to himself. Once they divorced from his wife, Sherry, because he was having an affair, trying to marry the woman, Tara was having the affair with, but she couldn't really go through with the divorce. Mm -hmm. He also wasn't that happy in his job. I mean, it was well paying, which was risky for him, but he had planned to start his own company, so he kind of just wanted to start a new life. And I guess the best way he thought to go about doing that was... So a few days, you know, after the funeral and everything, the police were still investigating to try and find out what actually happened. A neighbor who lived on the same street as Chris, uh, she noticed, you know, there was a little memorial set up outside Coleman's home by friends and relatives and neighbors, you know, in remembrance of the three people who were brutally murdered. You know, it was out there with balloons, footballs, Legos for little guys. But one day, not long after the funeral, uh, this neighbor saw Chris come out, grab all the stuff, and just fuck it in a bit. I was like, all right, that's that done. I mean, it's obvious Chris did a terrible job of trying to cover his tracks. 
I couldn't tell if he was just a dummy or just didn't give a shit. Probably both. So I okay, I'm gonna curl it all the way around like this, uh, and I'll be back when I'm done.